Hello everybody, I am NotPog, and welcome to Tutorial Series Part 3. Today we are going to be learning on how to make an origin that has mode changing. Mode changing origins are origins that by using a press of a button or some or other way to change modes, you can switch modes and that changes your abilities, maybe your downsides, and it also just lets you become something completely different. Let's get on with the tutorial. All right, to get started, you'll wanna open the, either your own data pack or the tutorial pack that I provide. And you wanna to go to your powers folder, which is inside your namespace and inside powers. And if you don't have one, then you should definitely create them. And as you can see here, we have our old dash power that we did in the first tutorial. Now we're gonna do new, we're gonna do file, and we're gonna name it mode changing, or you can name it whatever you'd like, but I'm naming it node um, mode changing, or actually I'll just ch name it mode. There we go. And you wanna add these brackets and from here on out, we're gonna be looking at the origin wiki. All right, now that we're in the origin wiki, I'm in the power types uh, tab. And from here, you can look at all the power types we want. But from now on, we're just gonna be using multiple. Multiple basically lets you have multiple powers in one file, which basically helps us condense a lot of things. So let's get the multiple code. All right, and now that we're here, we can remove this part right here. And all we need is that multiple up there. Now with two quotations, we're going to add mode. You can name it anything you'd like, but for just reference, it is really good to name it mode just because this is what keeps track of what mode you're in. All right. And now that we're going to go back to the origin wiki and we're going to want to grab ourselves a resource power. And let's just copy and paste what they have here by default. All right, now that we're back in the IDE, we can delete that. And this is basically, in a way to explain it, is kind of like a scoreboard. It holds values and you can set it to whatever value you'd like with a minimum and maximum. We're gonna set it to zero and one, but we can set it to more and I'll show you why later. So we're gonna have it zero one, which basically means on or off which is either one mode or the other. Then for HUD render, we want to change this to true. And later we can come back and change the sprite. But we're going to use the default one it provides us. Next, we're going to be creating the way to enter each mode. So we're going to do active. This basically means that you can name anything, but this basically means that Whenever you press the button, it will change you the mode. So this is like the active button press. Going into power types, we're gonna to go to action related and we're gonna go active self. And we can just copy this code down here that they have by default, but you can also write it from scratch using the variables they provide you. We're gonna go back to the IDE and we're gonna paste it in and remove what we don't want. All right, we're gonna remove that. And in here, we're going to remove everything here. So now we just have the very basic fundamentals, entity action, cooldown, HUD render, key. And conditions will come in later. For this active, we want to change the entity action, which I did explain in my last origin tutorial. We're going to be wanting something called an if else. But if you want more than one mode, you can get an if else list. So basically with the if else, the way we're gonna be doing it is we're gonna grab this code and we're gonna paste it in here. And from here, this condition, we're gonna make the condition to check what mode we're in. And depending on the mode, it will change it to the opposing mode. And if this were an if else list, it will just keep going. So you'll have a condition for if mode, let's say mode zero, then it'll put you in mode one. If mode one, it will put you in mode two, etc. Or you can also make it like so you can scroll backwards. So then it would be like if mode two and you press forward, then it will reset it to zero or something like that. But that's basically fundamentally how it works. So 
We're gonna go back into the wiki. We're gonna go to Entity Conditions. We're gonna go down to Resource. Copy what they have. Actually, we can copy the whole thing right there. And we're gonna replace this right here. And instead of example, a simple resource, we're gonna delete everything in those quotations. And we're gonna do star uh, colons star. And then we're gonna do an underscore and then we're gonna do mode. So to explain what this is doing is this star right here is for, it just basically fills in the name of this file and this does the same thing. So the name of this file and then mode. So mode is the name of our um, power over here for resource. So if you named it something else, you have to put that name there. And we're gonna do if it's equal to zero. So this is going to be checking if you're in mode zero. Now we want it to do something if you're in mode zero and something when you're not in mode zero. So we're going to go to entity action types. We're going to do change resource. We're going to copy and paste this right here. So we're going to paste that in and we're going to paste this in right here. So for the if action. So this right here is when we're in mode zero. In mode zero, we're going to want it to put us in mode one if we are pressing the button. So you're in mode zero, you press the button, you want to change modes. So we're going to make it one. So we're going to do it right here. So change resource and then put the same thing you put for the condition asterisk colon asterisk underscore mode and then change one. You do, do comma and just to make sure, just to make the code cleaner, we're going to do set colon, and then we're going to do, sorry about that. Let me fix that. That is wrong. So we're going to do operation, and then we're going to do set. There we go. So now that is fully operational. So this basically makes it so it changes it to one by setting it, not adding it. So in case you have like score two, it doesn't make it score three. It makes it score one every time. And we can just copy this and replace this and change this to zero. So then when you're not in mode zero, then it changes it to zero because then if you're not in mode zero, the only other option you can be in is mode one. So you want to go back to mode zero. A uh, cooldown, you can just leave it to one because you want it to be instantaneous, but you can add a cooldown if you want there to be a channeling uh animation which we can get into in another tutorial all right and for key we can keep it to key.use but i'm going to make it simple and we're going to do key.origins.secondary active and that should be done and we're going to turn off continuous this is very key to making um mode changing origins functional because if continuous is true, then you'll be changing modes every second or whatever the cooldown may be, and it will mess everything up. So you want continuous to be false. All right. And from here on out, this is the fundamentals for changing your mode. All right. So this is all done. So we can go into, we can go into origins tutorial.json. And from here, instead of, you can just copy this and change this to modes. And we can go back into Minecraft and now you'll see it here and we can fix it so it can have a proper name and everything. But right now it works as is. So now you can see that there is this bar and that bar is at zero right now, but you can change it. And there you go. You're in a different mode. So for some people, they do not want that to be displayed because especially if you have more modes, it will just be like a progress bar rather than a score being kept. So you can keep this hidden and sh have other resources that only show up for display. And then using that, you can display which mode you're in. All right, now that our mode changing power is done, we're gonna go back to our dash power and we're gonna make it so it only works when we're in mode one. What you would do for this is you would go into the origins wiki you can go into entity condition types and we're going to go down to resource and we can copy all of this 
And this is something that you uh, is mandatory for mode changing origins to work. Every power you make under a mode has to have a condition that says what mode it is in. So, for example, let's go at the very bottom, paste this in. And now for this, we can do asterisk colon and then we can do asterisk underscore mode. Actually, we can remove this one and it has to be modes underscore mode because this is our modes power and the power for the actual score is mode. So let's go back in there. Asterisk modes underscore mode. So we're checking if it equals one. So now if we file save all and go back into Minecraft and we can select this. Now, if we check our primary, it does not let us. So I'm pressing primary right now and it does not let us dash. However, if I use my secondary, enter mode one and then press primary, it will dash us. So that is basically the fundamentals for creating a mode changing origin. You basically keep track of a score and using that score, you add conditions onto all the powers you would like for that mode so that those powers only work when that condition is met. That way you can basically have 50 origins in one origin, but as long as there's 50 trackers keeping track of it, they will each be separated. I am not Pug, and thank you for watching this tutorial, and I hope you have a great day. Peace.